Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese ramen in the past week. And this is my first ever weekly video that happens on a Friday. Tomorrow, Saturday would be Chinese New Year's Eve this year. So I'm doing a live stream on a day, which usually happens on a Thursday. Therefore, we actually don't have a weekly report. We have after six days report. <laughs> we still have a couple of things going on this week, although most of them are actually to do with cinema. As usual, first dramas that have gone live or will go live soon. Number one, on the 16th this week, we've got a suddenly airdropped Mi Wu Chang drama, Light On, from ITE. Usually, Light On dramas are 12 episodes. This one is only six episodes. If you vaguely remember, there was a film that was supposed to go into cinema and then got pulled off that has the same name. But the English title of the drama version is very different. It's called Why Try to Change Me Now? This drama is led by Dong Zijian and Hai Qing. Both are very good actors. As it is only six episodes, I'll try to find half a day a day to just binge it. If it's good enough, I'll let you know. Then we have another drama that has just announced. It's gonna go live on the third day of Chinese New Year, which is 24th. It is a Yoku drama contemporary comedy called Da Kai Shu Turn on the Right Way of Life, led by Huang Bo, Mei Ting, Zhu Zhu. All very good actors, no problem at all type of actors. Plus, it will also feature youngsters who are very good, such as Rong Zi Shan. And it's a contemporary middle life crisis story for the parents' generation and then how they deal with their kids. Looking at the trailer, it's gonna be a really fun ride and probably a good thing to go live during Chinese New Year. Not so long ago, I talked about a drama that started shooting, Ming Guo time setting espionage drama led by. Zeng Shunxi and Chen Duling, if you still remember, Guzhou Lonely Boat, it still doesn't have an official English title yet. They've started promoting officially during this week. And the nice thing is, it also includes Zhang Songwen and Wang Yuwen. Hey, 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 suddenly it makes it so much more interesting. I don't have high hopes for Chen Duling being the female lead, but I really, really look forward to Zeng Shunxi and Zhang Songwen acting opposite and then including Wang Yuwen, which I also like her very much. So for this drama, I suddenly got really interested. The thing with Zeng Shunxi and Zhang Songwen is both of these two actors in life speak Cantonese very fluently. Although they have natural different accent of Cantonese. I know I, I'm dreaming, but I, if this drama can just have one scene of them facing off each other speaking Cantonese instead of Mandarin, it would be so nice. Then there is a drama during this week that has just got its license. So it can air anytime now, and it is the fantasy drama that Tencent owns, Chongzi. If anybody still remembers it, it's led by Xu Zhengxi and Yang Chaoyue. Since they've got the license, likely they're gonna check it out this year, although when we do not know. But Yang Chaoyue also has another fantasy drama that's definitely gonna air this year on Aichi with Ding Yuxi, the Qi Shi Ji Xiang, seven times love you story that comes from Heng Xin Yin Li. So if nothing went wrong, at least Yang Chaoyue is gonna have two fantasy Xianxia drama that she leads airing 2023. You know, it would be really fun if Aichi and Tencent air these two Yang Chaoyue dramas at the same time. Then the rest of the stuff are about Filmland. Let's talk about them one by one. First, there is a film that has finished shooting during this week. Potentially very exciting. It is a period Tang Dynasty setting film happening most in the west of China at the time, Dunhuang the very famous cave painting place called Dunhuang Yingxiong, literally would mean heroes of Dunhuang or Dunhuang heroes. And it is based on the novel written by the very famous author Ma Boyong, who's written the original novels of Chang'an Shi, Shi Chen, Luo Yang, Feng Qi Long Xi, it's all this guy's work. And then it's directed by Cao Dun, who is the director of Chang'an Shi, Shi Chen, and is known to be the best director at cinematography. And they've already collaborated before. For him, when he is the director, there's one thing guaranteed is the cinematography is going to be breathtaking. And since it's Tang Dynasty setting, it's by Ma Boyong, you already kind of guess what type of story it would be. And then it features a huge ensemble of actors, a lot of famous people, mostly guys. I just pick out a couple of names that <laughs> you'll be very familiar with, including Dou Xiao. Okay, Lei Jiaying, yeah, you know him. Zhu Yawen, sure. And then it also includes a guy that I cannot wait to see, and he's the main lead, Zhang Yu. 
this actor, if he's in the film, it's almost guaranteed the acting is gonna be really, really good. That type of magical actor who can play anyone. He's actually really charismatic, just as himself, but when he plays different roles, it's unrecognizable. He's the type of actor I would not compare him to other actors. He would just belong to his own class type of actor. And he's in this film gonna be in period drama, armor fighting in the desert. <laughs> Then there's another film that has wrapped shooting during this week, and this is the second time I'm gonna mention Ping Yuan Shang's Mo Xi. Why? Because this film is called Wo De Peng You An De Lie, My Friend An De Lie. It is based on a novel written by the same author who wrote Ping Yuan Shang's Mo Xi. The funny thing about this project is it is led by Dong Zijian and Liu Haoran. These two guys happen to be playing the drama and the film version of Ping Yuan Shang's Mo Xi. The drama version that has just finished airing, Why You Try To Change Me Now, led by Dong Zijian. And then the film version, Ping Yuan Shang Mo Xi called Fire on the Play, but I think they changed it to a different title, is led by Liu Haoran. So basically, Dong Zijian and Liu Haoran plays the same character of the same work, and then they come together in the film version of another <laughs> film that's based on the same author's novel. The universe works in mysterious ways, that's how you can explain everything. Then we have a film that has started promoting officially. It will get released, they're saying, this year in cinema. Exactly when not yet confirmed. And that is the film version of Ai Hen Mei Wei, Delicious Romance. Do you still remember the drama that was really well received? So the film version is done, it's still the three main female leads. They've released the first very quick, not really showing exactly what is happening type of trailer, but the saying, we're gonna see you in cinema this year. Drama and films, although they're all in camera, they're actually very different. With the same IP and roughly same setting and characters, if you can do a good drama version, does not mean you can exactly do a good film version. Like think about Sherlock, for example. Or let's see if this IP, Delicious Romance, can outperform the other ones. Then there also is a very unique film that has announced they're gonna go into cinema in 2023. This is the sequel to a previous film that's actually only a web film. Mu Zhong Wu Ren, literally meaning somebody is so proud that they just don't see other people. It's like in their eyeballs, they don't see other people. So that's the idiom's meaning. That film got really well received within China. It's a wuxia film that is done in such a strong style and very high taste in a way that people think it deserves big screen. It cannot just be a web release. It's unfair to it. They've just finished doing the second movie of the same IP, same leading characters, but different supporting roles. And it's called Mu Zhong Wu Ren R, which is literally second of that IP, and they say they're gonna put it in cinema. You're gonna be able to watch it on big screen, which makes a lot of people very happy. This is a paradigm setting wuxia film, led by Xie Miao and the kid Yang Enyou, who is the kid in Light Up the Stars. Very good kid actor. Not that many people have watched the first movie uh, because it never got released in cinema, but I would highly recommend you to go and find out this fifth movie and watch it because it's really good. Just web film beyond your expectation of normal web film. So these are the drama and film related stuff we've had this week. Quickly mentioning, uh, right now I'm watching Kuang Biao Knockout and I'm chasing the drama Shao Nian Ge Xing, <laughs> Blood of Youth. Give me some time. There are too many dramas, okay? Uh, I've just finished uh, binging a drama that's 39 episodes and I'll talk about it soon. And then I'm also watching Three Body and so far the Tencent version performed so much better than I expected. Surprise! I'm so happy that there is a version now that's live action of this IP that's actually worth watching. You know, I'm so worried about it. it's not gonna do any justice to the original work, but so far, so good. In my projection, basically, if the Tencent version of Three Body keeps to its current quality to the end, the 30 episode of the first book, if they can keep it, then it would be a humongous task for Netflix trying to I'll do it. Particularly when it's done by Dumb and Dumber. That just quickly reduces the possibility of that, that working out well. One final thing I want to mention, which is really, really funny, is if you play games, you probably have heard about the row between NetEase, Wang Yi in China, which has been basically dealing with Blizzard for years of hosting like their games and stuff. Now they've kind of broken off 
since November last year. It was like a huge divorce between two companies. Basically, it's making it impossible for the Chinese server game players to keep playing Blizzard game. Ever since then, they have been negotiating and <laughs> during this week, Blizzard just put out an even sort of less desirable announcement saying things in an extremely <laughs> green tea way. So, Lu Yicha, this word in Chinese, current internet language, just means somebody who is a very specific type of B-I-T-C-H. Type of characters that you see in, for example, Nothing But 30, played by Zhang Yue, or the type of character that you see in Wo the Qian Ban Shen, like the first half of my life, that drama's Wu Yue's role, playing innocent, and saying all those words that makes them look small and timid and weak but kind but actually doing that to actually get what they want that type of mm -hmm. in the announcement the B blizzard put out it has that very strong vibe of somebody being mm, like that and then wang yi got really angry wang yi just immediately <laughs> ruthlessly pointed that out and the really funny thing is people <laughs> found out immediately the day after at Wang Yi's headquarters, they have their cafes. They put out a new thing on their menu, <laughs> on their drink called Bao Xue Lü Cha, Blizzard Green Tea, which is like a Frappuccino, but they name it <laughs> Blizzard Green Tea. And um, it's on the menu that if you order online, you can just see it. It shows up as a new item. Oh my god, I love the world! <laughs> okay, I just love how people can be very uh, inventive and sarcastic and dry, <laughs> but funny. Another thing I sincerely wish that I can be in China right now, because this Spring Festival cinema looks like so exciting because I would want to watch actually Wandering Earth, Man Jiang Hong, Deep Sea. There are at least five movies I really want to see. Some of those films have already been premiered at selected locations in China to get uh, feedback and stuff. And it seems there are quite a few films that got really good responses, particularly the animation, Deep Sea. If you're in somewhere that this film would actually go into cinema uh, for you, I think you can jump in blind. I have a really good feeling about it. This film probably is one of the best best 3D animation from China ever. I know it's a little bit too early to talk about that, but let's try out my, you know, like <laughs> ability to predict to the future. That's the end of this video. Thank you for watching Avenue X. For all the people who will come to the live stream, see you tomorrow. And if you don't, well, see you in my next video. Take care.